Hi, I'm John Hartman and I'm here today to talk to you about how to cut turquoise uh, into a, from a rough turquoise to a cabochon. And um, so I'm going to show you the steps uh, involved and we're going to use Bisbee turquoise today. And so um, what I do first is um, I soak the rock in water uh, so it'll, so it'll, uh, uh, it absorbs the water and it acts kind of like a cushion when you're sawing the rock with the diamond saw. So this is the piece of Bisbee turquoise here. And this here is a, um, a Wizard Diamond Pacific saw. It's called the Wizard. Um, it runs about a thousand dollars. It's a very nice saw, um, and it's a uh, it's a direct drive right out the 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 diamond blade is attached right onto the shaft of the motor, so you get very little vibration, and it also works differently than a than a conventional trim saw in that the the blade cuts down onto the stone instead of. Uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, the stone being on top of the blade, the stone is on the bottom of the blade, you get a lot less breakage in your rock. Uh, there are other kinds of saws, uh, diamond saws for cutting uh, stones, turquoise, they, they run from about a four inch saw all the way to about, a, we use up to a 12 inch saw for big rocks. Uh, this here rock here uh, would be able to, we, we, we would cut this uh, with about a 10 inch saw. Uh, and these saws can be purchased from uh, Covington, uh, Covington Engineering, uh, that's Covington Engineering, Covington-Engineering.com. Uh, they're good, good people. Uh, and the uh, wizard here can be purchased from Diamond Pacific. You can get a hold of them on the internet. Uh, there's other good places to buy uh, lapidary tools. Um, Dylan and I like the, uh, the mini saw. It's a four inch saw for small rocks. Uh, actually for this size rock, the mini saw would be even better than this wizard. The, mini, the four inch mini saw uh, can be purchased at uh, Indian Jeweler Supply for about $200. And uh, the blades for the mini saw I would use the Daniel Lepaki blades, which are about five dollars each. Uh, you can get uh, expensive blades for a four-inch saw up to about forty dollars, uh, forty-five dollars. Uh, these, this is a six-inch saw. The Wizard is a six-inch saw. The uh, Daniel Lepaki blades for this are about six to seven dollars. And the uh, a, a blade, I have an expensive blade on here I paid about $70 for, but it is really, uh, uh, it lasts a real long time and it is really uh, true, so I get very little vibration. Uh, the bigger the saw blade, naturally, the more expensive they are. And it is an issue because how much they cost and, and how big you use because it's the cost of, of cutting your material. Okay, so um, I'm going to use this now uh, and uh, cut a slab off this piece of Bisbee and show you where we go from there. You should always wear eye protection when uh, doing any kind of lapidary work. It's very important. Uh, you can really get hurt. Uh, uh, chips can fly up. Okay, now we've taken a slab off the Bisbee rock and, I, and typically what I would do is I would continue, uh, continue to slab this rock until it's all the way through. Um, I, I cut my slabs for um, ex expensive rock 
uh, I cut them about 1 8 to 3 16 inch thick slabs and for um, uh, uh, less expensive inferior uh, rock um, I would cut it a quarter inch because generally uh, the inferior rock will break up and, um, and uh, in, in the sawing of the rock especially if you don't soak it in water. Another technique that some people do for um, uh, cutting rocks, uh, uh, sawing the rocks prior to sawing them is they'll use super glue. They'll take super glue and they'll coat the whole rock nugget with super glue and what it does is it kind of puts a, a, a protective holding the rock together while you're sawing it. So uh, uh, super glue will not penetrate into the rock in general. Uh, you would use a medium consistency super glue to do that. And how, how uh, you would go about that is to put, get a plastic bag, uh, like a thick plastic baggie type bag, put it on the counter, put your rock down, coat it with the glue, and it will not stick to the plastic, the heavy plastic bag. And then if you have to, turn it around, coat that, and, and then let it dry overnight, and then you might give it a, another coating and let it dry for at least eight hours before you start sawing. Um, if, it's a, if it's a stable rock like Bisbee, um, then soak it in water will be plenty good enough. As you can see, this rock didn't even chip a bit. It's good hard material. Um, uh, Bisbee, Bisbee's really well known for being an extremely quality biz, uh, turquoise. Okay, so that's what the process of sawing. You need a diamond saw and you use water. You never use oil when cutting turquoise. Um, in choosing uh, where to cut and how to cut your turquoise nugget or rock, um, you examine it basically. You look at the rock and you look for the matrix in the rock. Uh, and in, in the case of this rock, I saw this was nice and clear and open, but it was just, it's a little bit concaved in here. And I thought, I figured, well, this is the rounded part of the rock, and, and it appears to be very nice uh, matrix and configuration, so I would start on this end, work my way back, and I would put my backing in this concave part, and I would save a lot of material by not having to grind that flat to back it. Okay, so uh, it's kind of, it's, it's uh, choosing which direction to, to cut your rock, is like a, it's a toss-up. You can, you can uh, cut it one way and it'll look one way and you cut it another and it'll look another way and you just have to make your best decision and often if you have a, a larger rock you can cut it one direction and then turn it and cut it a different direction because you have plenty of material to work with. Another uh, uh, a factor in deciding how you're going to cut your rock is the, the shape of the stones that you want. Let's say if you wanted square stones out of this rock, you might want to cut it this way first and then cut, cut a slab here, a slab there, and that way. And, and that would get it almost to a square and you'd have like, let's say one, two, three stones. And then, and then your rock would almost be square or maybe cut this one straight across here. So you'd have four stones and then, and then you'd have your square there, okay? So depending upon how you want to, your majority of your cabochons, the shapes that you want them to be, would be how you would uh, analyze how you would cut, start cutting your uh, original nugget or rock. You want to, if you, again, if you want to cut ovals or squares or what have you, uh, you might want to cut the edges to, so you have uh, uh, oval shapes all the way back in a, in a tubular type of a situation and then just slab them off one, at, one after another. Okay, um, once we've um, slabbed the material, uh, with turquoise it's pretty much customary to back it. And the reason why we back our turquoise stones is turquoise is a fairly soft stone and we back it to give it a cushion when it's in the jewelry. And um, it really helps uh, hold the stone together. If somebody, especially like on a men's ring or a bracelet, somebody might hit it up against something and crack the stone. If the stone is backed, 
it will not probably crack. It'll probably save your stone. So um, what is standard in the business to use for backing a stone is called DevCon plastic steel. It's a, it's a two part, uh, you use DevCon plastic steel putty. It's a two part um, uh, uh, um, epoxy based um, putty type substance and, um, it, and it's very, very strong. That is customary. Um, now, like on this, what we've done here is we've previously backed some stones to show you what we've done here. Um, we don't use DevCon, we use a, a, a polymer resin and we mix like a, a uh, oh, it's uh, like a, a plaster of Paris um, with it and, um, and a, uh, uh, a, a fiberglass particles to hold it together to make it bond real well. It's very, we mainly cut stones for our own jewelry and we like our stones lightweight. So that's why we use that. The plastic steel's a little heavier and we just uh, find this is better. Uh, if you need that formula, you can uh, email Dylan or myself and we'll be happy to tell you uh, where to get it. But you have to buy it in bulk, a gallon at a time and it's very expensive. Okay, um, what we use is we use a, um, this is a, a, a plastic, uh, you, you can get it at Home Depot and um, it, in the, it's, it's just a plastic for like a clear plastic for a, a, a temporary replacement of windows or what have you. Um, and uh, you can either use that or you can just simply use wax paper on a countertop. You'll mix your DevCon and then you just put, you take your stone like this and like a popsicle stick and you, and you take a little bit of DevCon, you apply it to the stone and you put it down there and just kind of go back and forth and this is what, what, it'll, what it'll end up looking like after, you've, uh, after it's dried. You've got your stone and then you've got a nice smooth clean back here.